Hey guys, Crip the Lazy Geek here and today I want to get a bit more into why do we stack astrophotos, what are the sources of noise, how do they work, why do we use bias frames, why do we, we use uh, dark frames as well, what do they actually do, why do we, take to, why do we need to actually stack, stack dark frames as well, why do we take flat darks, you know, all sorts of questions like that. And one of the analogies that we see a lot is we look at the camera sensor and we rep represent each pixel as a bucket that collects photons and we just uh, do an analogy with a bucket that collects rainwater from rain that's falling and it's a great analogy and I'm going to put my own little twist on it um, during this video and it might actually get stretched into multiple videos because there's a lot of ground um, to cover. And a lot of this has been covered by others before. Some of it, I think, is kind of my original idea. I don't know, maybe it's already been done exactly the same way by others, in which case, sorry. Um, but, okay, let's start. And let's say that it's raining outside, and it actually is raining outside, which is why I'm inside right now. But it is raining outside, and I want to convince myself that rain falls uniformly, roughly, across a surface. Why not? So to do that, something that would be fairly reasonable to do is to take lots of buckets, put them uh, across a surface area in a very uniform way, and all those buckets have exactly the same size, and then we can have a cover on top of those buckets, and we can open that cover and then close it whenever we want, and then we'll just measure the amount of water that was in each bucket. So that sounds, you know, fairly uh, straightforward. And so let's think about what happens if, you know, I open my cover and I don't know any better and I have the capability to do so, I can open and close it instantly. And plus, I'm, uh, let's make the assumption that I'm never going to cut a, a raindrop in half. And, you know, I'm going to open it for just one millisecond and immediately close. If it's super fast like that, and then I'm going to look at my results, I'm going to look at my buckets, and here I have four buckets in a 2x2 two two matrix. But of course it could be 10x10, 10 10, or it could be like my ASI 533, which would be 3008 per 3008. Um, so I'm looking at my buckets, and I will see that because I, I really opened the cover for such a short time, some buckets will have a couple of raindrops or maybe just one raindrop in them and others will be completely dry and it will be like fairly random how this, this is distributed and if I were to just you know end my experiment there I could make the conclusion that no rain does not fall uni uniformly because some buckets collected water and other buckets did not collect any water and that's that's mysterious and we need to investigate that further and find out the cause for that which of course is nonsense. Um, and that's, that's like one way of already intuiting that there is some kind of noise associated with the signal that we want to gather. There's variance, because uh, rain is a signal that we know will be uniform. But if I expose to rain in a very short time, then I can see something that is not uniform. So something is going on there. It's exactly the same thing for a signal from uh, space, from a, a deep sky object, where photons come into your pixels at a certain rate. And it's not a rate that's constant. It's not always the same. It's kind of random. And so by exposing a very short time, you'll see this, this problem. And, you know, I could be, you know, exposing longer. So instead of uh, one millisecond, I'll be exposing for like 60 seconds. Hopefully my buckets are big enough and the rain is light enough for that to work. And then I'm going to close my cover. And then I measure and I will see that my, each of my buckets will have collected roughly the same amount of water. For example, 10 milliliters. And, um, but they all have little differences. Um, one is 9.1 milliliters. Another is 9.3 milliliters. You know, um, another is 10.5 milliliters. It's all slightly different in there. And we could, you know, look at those differences and, and take more or less the average of those differences 
to kind of see like, okay, what uncertainty I have about the amount of water that actually, you know, should have reached each of my buckets. And we could also do another experiment. So we've exposed once for 60 seconds and then, you know, we're going to empty the buckets and we're going to start again with the buckets in the same position and we're going to expose for 60 more seconds. And then we're going to compare each bucket to, for its current value to the previous value that it recorded, recorded before. Again, if the rain hasn't changed in intensity, I would expect, you know, 10 milliliters roughly. And I'll see that my pixel here was 9.8 in the prior run and now it's 10.1. So there's definitely variance there. There's some random thing that's happening that I cannot control. And that random thing is called the shot noise. And that's exactly what happens with photons that arrive on the camera. We have an uncertainty about what numbers of photons should have arrived. Uh, I mean, they did arrive, but it's like, it kind of changes depending on, you know, the actual interval of time that I am using, even for the same exposure time. And so that's very interesting. One of the things as well with shot noise is that in absolute term, it increases with the amount of signal that we're collecting. So in the previous example, I had uh, 10 milliliters and we saw like values that could be 9.1, 10.5. So we'd, saw, we'd see that my uncertainty was kind of like, let's say within plus one, minus one milliliters. It's measured in a couple of milliliters. Now let's assume we've now done this exposure for much more than 60 seconds and with much larger buckets and we've measured roughly, you know, one liter, one liter of uh, water in each uh, bucket. And we look at the measurement and we see one, li one liter, li one liter, oh, I have so much trouble with that, one liter, one, li one, one liter of water in each bucket, but one of the buckets might have like 1.02 li liters and the other might have uh, 9.07 uh, liters. And so the difference now is measured in tens of uh, milliliters. Uh, so the absolute kind of uncertainty that we have about our signal has increased. We, we now we used to be able to to see like within one milliliter. And now we're looking at several tens of milliliters of, of difference between each of my samples, if each of my buckets. But at the same time, we've increased the amount of signal that we've received, the amount of rain that we've received. One, li one liter is much more than 10 milliliters. And if we take the ratio of uh, that uncertainty that we have, um, that noise in other words, so 10, uh, like 0. 1 milliliter versus tens of milliliters uh, and we divide it by the actual amounts that we collected, we can see that we are actually getting a much smaller and smaller uh, number. So if I take my noise, I divide it by the signal, it's much smaller. If I do the reverse, it's getting much and much larger. And that means that we are increasing our signal to noise ratio. I've not only, I've collected more signal, I've also connected, collected more noise, that uncertainty in my measurement, but relatively speaking, if I take my signal, the amount of the signal divided by the amount of the noise, I've increased that figure. So the noise relative to the signal is now less significant. And so I have a better image of what my actual signal that I'm trying to capture is which is great. And uh, we can see that in this particular shot noise, our signal will grow linearly, like the more exposed, the more rain comes in, like very linearly. And the noise itself, that uncertainty I have about the final measurement is uh, measured as a square root. So it increases a lot at first and then it kind of starts to stabilize and it keeps growing, but more and more slowly. So in absolute terms, I'm, I'm getting more and more noise, which is true. Uh, but I'm, I'm getting much more signal than I'm getting more noise. So the amount of signal uh, accelerates, not accelerates, but increases faster than the amount of noise does. So that's why exposing for longer in total is very convenient. But now, like I'm thinking like, okay, I have only those small buckets. I can never hope 
to measure one uh, liter within those uh, buckets because they're going to get full and then I won't know whether rain is uniform or not because I lost all information and this is exactly what happens with a saturated pixel, a bright pixel that has exceeded its well depth which is what we talked in uh, one of those last videos. So we've seen you know what happens so but I can't I don't have one li one liter uh, containers in my arsenal so what can I do? Well I can take multiple exposures and then add them together at the end. That could work right and then if we think about it, you know, if I put the cover on, I expose to the rain for 60 seconds and I put the cover back on and, you know, I look at the quantities and I set that aside. And then I'm going to take uh, another set of, I'm actually going to build an apparatus that's a bit more complicated. We'll have our set of two by two or whatever by two by whatever kind of uh, containers there and we're going to have many of those sets one after another and they're all on a conveyor belt so i can you know take an exposure with one set and then my conveyor belt brings a new set that's empty and i can take another exposure with that new set and that conveyor belt will move again to go to the next set etc and on my right so on your left uh, we'll see more and more sets, you know, that have had measurements accumulating. And it kind of feels like, you know, if I were to take a single set and expose 60 seconds and then close it, assuming that I'm not saturating my, or filling up my uh, buckets completely, well, I'd, I'd probably get the same result than, let's say that I open for one second, close for one second. Uh, sorry, I open for one second and I close it. The conveyor belt moves, we get to the next set, I open for one second and then I close it. The conveyor belt moves, we get to the next set, I open for one second and then I close it. And then in the end I have all of my uh, measurements on the right and so what I can do is I can you know take a bigger bucket and I'm gonna pour, like I'm gonna find my pixel. So let's say this is my pic pixel from the top left, from my point of view. I'm gonna pour the water from that pixel in the container without spilling it like I just did. And then we're gonna take the next set and we're gonna take that and we're gonna pour it in the same container. And, uh, and then I'm gonna be able, once I've done all of those sets for that particular pixel, I'll be able to weigh how much water was in like I added everything together and I weigh how much tool water we captured across those 60 one second exposures and we can compare it to the single 60 second exposures and if I'm able to actually gather all of the water from the, each of the buckets and you know I'll be doing that calculation for each bucket individually but if I'm able to capture all of the water into here and there's no error in measurement I would expect to get the same value as if I had exposed for 60 seconds within the range of uncertainty of the shot noise which still exists and which is linked to just rain being rain uh, so it's linked to the signal but still, I'd be within my short shot noise uncertainty. I, I would expect to get the same result as uh, a, like 60, a pure 60 seconds exposure. So when you look at that, you can think like, huh. So in, that means that, you know, if I take a, a 60 second exposure or 60 times one second exposure, we get the same result within the margin of uncertainty of the shot noise and that's it absolutely true if you do not have any other source of noise any other issues then you can expose for as little as you want and then you can add up all of the exposures or average them out if you have enough precision to do so which computers typically do um, and you can just get the same result as if you had exposed for a full 60 seconds or, you know, in another way of saying this is that taking uh, 1,000 one second exposures is exactly, it will, should give the same result as taking uh, 10 100 second exposure. It's the same thing, which, you know, it, it kind of feels weird, but that's the way it is. So why do we not do that? It's because of the reed noise, because one of the assumptions I made is that when I was pouring water into here, 
I made the assumption that I was pouring all of the water without any issue. But it's not the case. Look at this. I don't know if you can see, but there is actually still water. There's a droplet of water is still in there and it's kept here because of the surface tension of my bucket. And each of my buckets there will also retain a little bit of water when I pour it in. So I'll pour this in. No, and there's still a bit of water in there due to the surface tension. And, you know, some of my buckets might have a, a, a surface inside that's smoother than some of my other buckets. So the average amount of water that they, that they retain when I pour this into uh, the, the bigger bucket to actually do my measurement frame per frame um, is, you know, going to be different per pixel. Now, okay, sure, but I can measure that, right? I can kind of measure how much water stays in each, each bucket. I could, uh, you know, take my empty bucket. I could fill it, fill, I could, of course, uh, weigh how much that bucket weighs without anything in there. Then I can pour a, a quantity of water that I exactly know um, into that bucket without any loss of water. Then I pour that bucket somewhere else. So I just throw the water away and then I measure how much is left in my bucket, how much weight the bucket has gained. And that will let me measure, you know, how much water doesn't make it into the measuring buckets in the end. Okay, well, that's good. But then let's do that with the same bucket twice in a row. The first time you might find 0 0.1 milliliters. The second time you might find 0 0.12 milliliters. The third time you might find 0 0.09 milliliters. You'll always find a slightly different value because like that surface uh, is, is not perfect and it's going to always have a little bit of a difference in terms of the number of droplets or the amount of rain that's remaining in the bucket that I've emptied to try to measure exposure per exposure. And each time I try to measure the amount of water in that bucket, that uncertainty is in there. So we can see that there will be an average amount of water that's remaining and I can compute that by simply, you know, filling in my bucket, emptying it, seeing how much is left and doing that multiple times and average, averaging that across for each and every one of my buckets. Um, but I still have an uncertainty about, you know, I have the average, but that each time I actually do that exercise, I have something that's slightly different than the average. And that uncertainty, we can think of it as the read noise. And the average of the amount of water that's left in each of my buckets, we can think of it as what the bias frames model. So when you take a lot of bias frames, which are the, um, a dark frame where you cover your camera, um, you make sure that there's no light hitting the sensor and you take many exposures with the shortest exposure time that you can. And that's a, a, a way of measuring, you know, the read noise, the total read noise per pixel. If you take many, 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 many of those exposures and you average them, well, you'll be doing exactly the same that I just did. We took a bucket, emptied it, measured how much water was left. We filled it again, emptied it, make, made sure how much water was left, we emptied it, etc., etc. So this is what a bias frame does. A bias frame will basically let you subtract the average of uh, that offset that we're seeing because that of the surface uh, stickiness that we have relative to the water. Uh, but the bias frame does not get rid of that random uncertainty that we have uh, relative to that amount of water that stayed in my bucket. So that's one analogy to the read noise. And that read noise happens every single time you read that pixel. And so that means that if you have a single 60 second exposure, that uncertainty will be applied only once. If I have 60 times one second exposures, that uncertainty will be applied 60 times and it accumulates. It might not accumulate in the way that you expect. It's not a simple addition, but it does accumulate. So we get into like a result like, huh, in theory, I should be able to take as short of an exposure as I want. And, and still achieve the same result in the end. But in practice, because of my read noise, I cannot do that. 
And that's why the read noise is uh, so critical to determine a minimum exposure time and you want to make sure that you've gathered enough water in each of your buckets to make sure that uh, the, the read noise has, has, has been completely overpowered. That's the logic behind it. Even though like CMOS cameras in particular uh, these days they have a very very small amount of read noise which is absolutely awesome. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop for this video. There's still a lot of ground to cover using this as analogy. I haven't stretched it enough yet, but I'll keep stretching it. Uh, so I hope this was uh, useful to you guys. I hope it gave you an intuition about what that read noise is. Uh, I tried not to include any statistics or anything in there. I can't promise it will be the case in all of my following videos on the topic. Uh, but anyway, Hopefully it's been, this has been useful. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please click like. Uh, please also subscribe to this channel to not miss the rest while I'll be talking about uh, thermal noise and I'll be stretching really that, uh, that analogy very thin. I'll be talking about like heavy rain versus light drizzle and, uh, and that kind of stuff. So see you then and uh, thank you so much. Don't forget to look up at the stars. See ya.